Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. We're going to be talking about anvils today. Um, what to look for when you're buying an anvil, different types of anvils, um, how to find anvils if you're trying to score a deal on them. Um, so let's, let's dive into it. I've got a number of different sort of anvil setups here. Um, this is uh, my primary anvil. It's an anvil brand legend anvil, 120 pounds. Um, I did just recently pick up this Emerson 150 pound um, anvil. Um, got this, kind of wasn't looking for it. Um, and we'll talk about how to, how to do that, how to find anvils that are a good deal because I got an excellent deal on that one. I also have a small stump style anvil here um, that I got from Townsend and Son. I'll link to their YouTube channel. Um, it's... Um, a fun little anvil to, to travel around with. And then um, you guys have probably seen the video on this, uh, a little tiny stump anvil from Old World Anvils. So um, let's talk about what you really want to look for, right? If you're getting into blacksmithing, anvils can be a confusing topic. Um, there's different materials that they're made out of. There's different patterns and styles, um, a lot of different things that you might want to keep in mind. So what do you look for when you're trying to find an anvil? Um, if it's a newer anvil, it's gonna be made out of one of three basic materials. You're going to have a um, cast steel anvil, like this Emerson anvil. This is, um, I think they use 4140 or something along those lines, um, but it is a cast steel and I believe fully hardened anvil the whole way through. This is gonna make an excellent anvil. It's gonna hold up to a, a lot of um, wear and tear and resistance. This anvil right here, which is my primary usage anvil, is an anvil brand anvil. And rather than cast steel, it is ductile iron, um, which is a type of cast iron with some special properties. If you see ductile iron, that also is gonna be an excellent anvil. I've used this one for um, six or seven years now. It has held up um, great. Um, no major markings or anything like that on it. Um, ductile iron, this one is ductile iron also. Another excellent choice for an anvil. The third thing that you're gonna see anvils made out of, um, in, if you're looking at modern anvils, is cast iron. Now, ductile iron is a type of cast iron. It's a special type of cast iron designed for this sort of wear and tear. Um, if you go to Harbor Freight, for example, and you buy just a cast iron anvil, um, that's designed for light, light usage. And if you do any real work on it, you're gonna break that, on, that anvil. Um, even just hitting material into the surface of it with a hammer is going to mar the face of it, which is then going to cause you problems. Cast iron anvils are very cheap. If you need something, they can work okay, but just be aware that you're buying a temporary anvil that you're gonna have to replace because the, the stress of blacksmithing um, is just too strong, too much for um, cast iron anvils. So when you're out there looking at anvils, look at something that is either ductile iron or cast steel for modern anvils. For older anvils, the way those were designed was a little bit uh, different. They didn't have modern metal metallurgical techniques. They couldn't, um, especially not affordably, cast a giant piece of steel like this. And so what you'll get is an anvil that is made up of wrought iron for the body and then a steel plate will be welded onto the surface of it. If you are looking at these older um, anvils and you suspect that it may be a wrought iron anvil with a steel faceplate, what you really wanna check for is, A, is that steel faceplate there? Sometimes they are just completely gone. And B, is it well connected the entire way through? Tapping it lightly with the hammer, listening to see if it rings differently, anything like that, um, can be ways to see if there's some places where that faceplate may be coming detached. Um, but those old anvils um, 
can be excellent anvils. Um, the modern anvils, uh, honestly, are, are probably better. Um, you know, you know what you're getting with a modern anvil. It's going to be made if you get a quality one um, to some very good specifications that historic anvil makers um, never really would have been able to achieve. Uh, that being said, a good quality uh, old anvil. I've got a 110 year old hay button uh, anvil that I work on on a weekly basis. It is a joy to work on and they can um, be in good shape. You just need to make sure again that that face plate is securely attached, uh, that there's not a lot of sagging, right? Wrought iron was softer than steel and so you can get a lot of sagging. Older anvils too, you know, you get kids or uh, somebody else who's coming and doing a lot of cold work or they're just pounding on it with a sledgehammer for some reason. You start getting um, sways and dips and stuff like that. Um, if it's excessive, you know, you probably want to stay away from, uh, from that anvil. So with the, the four different anvils that we've got here, um, this is the cheapest and I'm, I'm still playing around with this to see whether or not it is a reasonable anvil option um, because it was a very cheap um, solution. And uh, so far it's been, it's been challenging. Stuff takes a lot longer here, especially if I was new. I don't know that I would want to use this setup a whole lot, um, but I'm going to keep playing around with it some and see um, how it goes. This little stump anvil right here you guys probably saw a video where I was burning that into the stump. I have used that anvil um, a few times over the years. It's a great anvil. Um, it's obviously smaller. It was, I think, in the $130, $150 price range or something like that when I bought it. Um, it's got a horn, which is nice. It's got a very small little pritchel hole there. Um, you know, it's got a nice heel. There is a lot that you can do on that anvil. If you're starting out and you're wanting to get into a, a cheap um, anvil option, something like this stump anvil could serve you well uh, for quite a while until you're ready to make that larger, bigger investment. Um, as we start looking at these larger anvils, right? 120 pounds, 150 pounds. Um, the question is how big of an anvil should I get, right? That is normally what people ask me. There's a kind of traditional blacksmithing answer, which is buy the biggest anvil that you can afford. There is something to be said that a bigger anvil, um, in a lot of ways, isn't gonna, you, you can do small work on a bigger anvil. Um, bigger anvils are heavier though. Um, I do move my anvil around pretty frequently around the shop or I take it places with me. 120 pound anvil is a big enough anvil that I can do the vast majority of the work that I want to do on it without any challenges. And it's also mobile. So if you are potentially going to be moving your anvil around your shop, or it's not going to be set in a single place, um, I think that 100, 120 pound range is probably a good range to go for um, when you're looking at an anvil. Um, as you start getting bigger, like this one, you know, it's only an extra 30 pounds, but um, you feel that when you're starting to move it. Um, if you've got a spot where your anvil is going to go and it's going to sit and you don't need to move it around, um, yeah, 150, 200, you know, they make some very large anvils. Um, those are, are great to work on, um, but man, they get hard to move. I've had to lug 180 pound anvils around and it is a lot less fun uh, than my 120 pound anvil here. So um, th these are kind of all things to, to keep in mind, right? Um, you know, the size of the anvil, the material that it's made out of. Um, there are some anvil shaped objects that you might want to be aware of and keep an eye out uh, for is maybe things to avoid even. Um, You'll see a lot of times um, vices have little anvils, and this one doesn't look super anvily. This little tiny vise that I've got does look more like an anvil. Um, you want to avoid this as a blacksmith. 
Um, any of these anvils incorporated into devices, they're almost always going to be cast iron anvils, so they won't hold up to sort of blacksmithing weight or hammer blows. Um, this also forms the casing around the screw for the vise. So hammering on this, you're going to break your whole vise pretty quickly. So don't look at a vise, um, even if it's got something that looks like an anvil on it, as a good option for a blacksmithing anvil. One option that I don't have set up, um, but I have seen people use successfully, is actually um, a sledgehammer head. If you can find, um, bigger the better, uh, a sledgehammer, um, and then drop that down into a stump so it's kind of sitting up and it's got it uh, well secured, this can give you a nice hard steel face. And it might be a lot easier to find um, a big sledgehammer than it is to find an anvil. And if you've got a sledgehammer, you may be thinking, well, I, I don't have a hardy hole, I don't have um, a horn, things like that. You know, how do I get around that? I've got a little hardy tool, um, you know, sunk down into this block right here. That can be a good option. You can get a swage block. And then your hardy tools can drop down into that swage block. This one, not quite the right size. Um, to get around a horn, you can buy or make something like this bickern right here. Between, you know, a, a block or some way to hold um, some one inch hardy tools, a bickern, and a sledgehammer head, you've got all the different things that you really um, want to do with an anvil put together. And this can be a cheap way to get into it and have all of those, um, those items that are really essential for blacksmithing. So a um, lot of different options for you. The probably biggest takeaways are um, stay away from anything that is cast iron. Um, it's not going to work well. It's not going to hold up long. But if you see um, ductile iron or cast steel, those are going to be good anvils. Um, stuff that's this small, I'm finding it to be a real challenge. You probably want to go for um, something bigger. Even just a big block of steel, even if it's not hardened steel, um, can be a good option. I would steer away from things like um, railroad tracks. I know they're real popular. Um, I've got some that I've used uh, out at Pioneer Farms. They're loud. Um, they don't have a lot of mass directly under them, and that can cause you some issues. Stuff tends to bounce around. Again, very loud, which may not sound like a big thing, but boy, when you're hammering, if it's ringing in your ears, it'll do damage to your eardrums and make things just take, um, make things a lot less pleasant. Um, but yeah, there are some, some good anvil options out there. It doesn't have to be sort of your traditional uh, style anvil, as long as you've got really a, a big center of mass is what you're looking for um, that you're gonna be hammering into, you're gonna be happy. You don't want things that are hanging over a lot. So you look at this, right? Most of the work you do on the anvil is gonna be right in line with the center of mass. If you look at this small anvil, right, it's not big, but that is going straight down into the wood, and so you get all the advantage of that wood. Same thing here, right? This anvil is going to be um, most of the work done right there, which is driving down, supported straight into the wood. Um, a lot less work, especially heavy hammer work, is gonna be done out there on the, the edges of it. So hopefully this was uh, somewhat informative um, for you. There are a lot of different types of anvils out there. There's some good materials that they're made of. Stay away from the, the cast iron ones and you're probably gonna be pretty happy. Um, the biggest advice I would give though when it comes to uh, what anvil you get is really how often do you have to move it? Um, if you've gotta move it frequently, like I said, a big anvil is, um, 
more of a pain than it is uh, a value that you're going to get out of it. If you're going to be able to keep it in one place and you've got the money for it, then yeah, get a big anvil. And if you do want to find uh, a good big anvil like this, um, 150 pound one that I got for um, roughly 600 bucks, um, the single best thing that you can do is tell people that you're looking for an anvil. Let people know that you're a blacksmith, that you're always looking for, for blacksmithing tools. Ask them to ask their friends. If anybody knows somebody who's got an anvil, um, word of mouth is the way to go. This is not even an old anvil. This one is brand new. There was um, an older gentleman who bought this a few years ago. I think used it a couple times maybe and then wound up having to uh, leave the state. And so he was selling all of his blacksmithing equipment um, and giving some really good deals. Uh, one of the people that I blacksmithed with, um, their wife was talking to their hairdresser. Their hairdresser heard that this guy was moving and he had blacksmithing equipment. And that got back to me. And I went out and was able to score um, this anvil for basically 50% of the, the retail price. Um, it doesn't happen every week, but um, a lot of my best blacksmithing scores have been word of mouth, right? You, know, you need people to know that you're looking to go buy things and um, ask them to use their networks. And eventually you'll hear about stuff that's going on and you can get some really good deals. Um, looking at things like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, um, there's a lot of people that are looking at those. They're kind of low effort, and so they can be really hard to find good deals that somebody else hasn't already snatched up. Um, so keep an eye out, estate sales, things like that, and again, word of mouth. Um, and if you're persistent with it and, and you know, annoy enough people telling them that you're looking for anvils, um, you can find really excellent deals um, even in what is today an extremely competitive uh, marketplace out there for used anvils. So, um, not a video where we did any forging, but hopefully this is useful if you're a new blacksmith, um, kind of what to look for, what some of the options are, uh, what are good materials, what materials to stay away from, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to find a good anvil at a good price and have something that'll serve you for, uh, for a very long time. So thank you so much and we'll see you next week.